everyone, it's Eleanor from Art with Eleanor, and today I'm showing you how to paint a flamingo using acrylic paints. But before we get into the video, if you could like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. So to start with, I printed off my reference photo, um, and I'm using the transfer technique to put the photo onto my canvas board. Um, to do the transfer technique you basically just use a soft pastel on the back of a photo and then go over it in pencil on top so it transfers the image onto your canvas. I'm using the transfer technique because I wanted to spend time on my painting process rather than on the drawing process but feel free to do what you'd like whether you prefer to draw things onto the canvas or use transfer technique like I'm using. The next step is to start on your base layers. So it's just a basic layer to cover the canvas and paint and make sure that there are no white gaps in the painting at all at the end. Um, I like to do quite a rough, quick base layer just so that I've got everything mapped out in paint before I start adding in details. If any of you are coming here from my Instagram, um, at Art with Eleanor, then you'll know that this painting has taken me quite a few months to actually finish. This is because I've had several other projects on throughout the course of the past few months, as well as going back to uni. So skipping out on something like the drawing process really saved me a bit of time. For any of you that don't know, I'm at uni studying biology at the moment, and I'm in my second year. So if any of the filming changes throughout the whole of this video it's because I've been trying some different setups at uni um, it's mainly towards the end that it changes quite a lot because um, at the beginning I was filming at home before I'd even moved to uni um, but at the end it will change a bit so sorry about that in advance but it means I'm getting used to how to film at uni so in the future hopefully videos will get better from now on A lot of this painting process is going to be me painting the background. Now this is the bit that I found the most difficult out of the whole painting and I knew that getting the background right would really help to make the main flamingo pop because that is the only one that's really in focus. So without getting the background right it doesn't look like the main flamingo is the focus of the painting. So if you're following along make sure to spend a lot of time blending in the background um, and perfecting it so that the main flamingo is able to stand out more than the others. I also wanted to give you some tips of what I've learned over this painting process these few months um, as my painting has really improved um, in this very short space of time and basically it's from learning how to use acrylics a bit more efficiently. So to blend um, you're better to have pre-mixed about three or four colours that you can go back and forth between so that you can blend all the colours into each other and this will help to create the background that you want that's a bit more blurry. The next piece of advice I can give you is not to water down your paints too much. You can probably see in this little bit of the video that I did actually water down my paints a bit too much um, but I learned that over the whole painting process that the less you water them down the better they blend. So of course you need a bit of water so that they're not really thick paints, but don't add too much. Don't make them almost a watercolour consistency. Make sure that they're like thick enough that they're able to lay down properly on the canvas. And my third tip for you guys is knowing your colour wheel. So knowing which colours to blend to make the colour you want is really important if you're gonna achieve a realistic painting. Um, of course, I'm still learning about this and this painting in, in particular really helped me to learn how to blend different shades of pink as well as a more orangey pink, um, which I wouldn't have known how to do without the trial and error process of this painting. So, as I just said, painting is a trial and error process. The beauty of using acrylics, especially for a beginner, is that you can rework them really easily as it dries so quickly between the layers. 
This means that you can layer up the paint as many times as you want to get it as perfect as you really need it to be. So this is probably one of the reasons why this painting in particular took me so long and I kept coming back to it over the period of a few months just to try and get it right. Now of course someone that's a bit more advanced at painting may quickly bash out a painting the size of this one but for me it was more about the process rather than getting the painting done. I wanted to learn something by doing it and of course everyone's got different aims with what they want to do with their paintings um, but for me it's the whole process is just something that I enjoy doing. So spending upwards of 10 hours on one small painting is something that I'm happy to do. Of course you guys can learn from my mistakes and basically just <laughs> skip out on quite a few of those hours and perfect it straight away. But for me, I really enjoyed having the time to spend just painting and being in my own zone. And I have to say, having a hobby such as painting or some sort of artistic outlet whilst at uni is really helpful for your mental health and well-being. And it also just gives you a break from your general work. I found that with the workload piling up, of course, art is the last thing on my mind, but the time I have spent doing art has actually been really valuable to me. And I've really enjoyed being able to spend the time just in my own space, like enjoying being present in the moment rather than worrying about what I've got to do or the next deadline that's been set. And it's just really important to remember that you need to take time for yourself as well as trying to get everything done. I also just wanted to ask you guys what you think of this new style of audio slash voiceover. Um, I'm not really that sure whether I'm that good at just talking from my heart rather than writing down everything I want to say, but if you guys are enjoying it so far please let me know in the comments down below and give this video a like because it really helps me to know what sort of video you guys want to, me to produce um also if anyone's got any suggestions for anything they'd want to see me do in the future then be sure to let me know in the comments below because i'm open to suggestions i've not always got an idea of what i want to do next so if anyone wants to see me do something in particular then let me know in the comments below. So at this point in the painting process as you can probably tell I'm starting to work on bringing in some of the details such as adding the shine to the beak and this is a bit that I found really hard and I did end up going over it again near the end of the video um, but it just took a bit of time to work out exactly what colours needed to be used um, to create the right sort of shine but in the end I decided to go for more of a grey colour rather than a blue and I think it gave a better effect than going for the true blue that was in the reference photo. So this is the point where the filming quality will change a bit so sorry about that. Um, it's basically because I'm trying to work out what is better to film with, whether I should use my iPad or my phone. My phone seems to give a brighter image, so I think that might be better. But as you'll see in a minute, I do switch back to using my iPad when I got a tripod because um, I thought that that would be better, but I'm not actually sure at this point. Um, so if you could let me know which you prefer um, in the comments below. That would be great so that I can know what to use going forward from here. It's also at this point that this painting started to really come together. So I've done about two or three layers for the whole painting at this point in time and 
I was struggling with getting the background right, as I said previously. It was quite hard to get it exactly how I wanted it, but at this point I blended in some white into the black that I was using for background and created two different colours of grey and started to add in the background to bump up the contrast and make it a bit crisper and clearer. As well as it being sort of a blurry background, it still needed the sort of definition between the shapes so they didn't just sort of blend into one. I think before I was over blending it, so at this point you can see I'm starting to crisp out the outlines and I think it just makes the piece look a bit more put together. And the final step in this whole painting process for me was to really work on the eye of the main flamingo. Um, personally, I think the eyes are a really big focal point of any animal. So trying to get this right was something that I wanted to leave till last so that it could really bring the whole painting together. Um, around the eye on the flamingo, it had a darker area I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but I didn't have it the right colour um, for most of this painting, so I changed that colour, as well as changing the size of the actual pupil and iris. So I think at the end it turns out quite well, um, but please let me know what you think of it. Um, and if you did enjoy this video, it would really help me out as quite a small YouTuber if you could give it a like and subscribe um, for more art videos like this and hopefully my art skill will increase as the videos go on so if you stay tuned you'll hopefully learn some more tips and tricks as well as see me develop as an artist. If you want to purchase this painting it, there's also a link to my Etsy in the description below. Thanks for watching.